one first one is db writer as name says db writer is responsible for writing dirty buffers from instance buffer cache to physical files dba files now here we are talking about two different things some portion is at memory level other portion is at file level all the execution is going to be in the memory every so often all that information will be flushed to a physical file system to make it permanent because we never know about the memory if server reboots for some reason entire memory is gone as we understand that it is volatile so that is the basic mechanism oracle follows in order to complete the transactions in consistent way and secured way too so as name says db writer so it's going to write the information from buffer cache to database files to make it permanent <coughs> that's the job of db writer now remember any time db writer gets invoked it writes the information which information dirty buffers in buffer cache two different lists are available one is a least recently used one the second one is most recently used one so in general db writer comes up it only writes in the list of least recently used because anyhow that is not being used mostly so let those write to db file most recently used ones are required because it is being used mostly so it tries to keep it there but there is a process called checkpoint during that background process when that gets invoked at the time db writer is responsible for writing both lru and mru buffers now we are talking about blocks and buffers what's the difference basically block is at file level buffer is at memory level so these buffers on the database buffer cache any time information needs to be retrieved from a database which is available in database files which are data files in data files it is stored in a blocks data blocks as we discussed just before at storage level that information will be pulled into the buffer cache when it pulls into the buffer cache we call these all our buffers so if it is in memory we call it a buffer when it is at storage level we call it a block blocks must be put into the buffers in the memory before it can retrieve before it can send it to a user as per the user request <clears throat> different types of buffers in a buffer cache there are dirty buffers dirty buffers are the buffers which are modified but not yet written to dbf files that is available in the buffer cache most critical buffers which must be saved to the dbf files in order to save our modifications to a database free buffers free buffers are the buffers that are available for use let's say for example user 1 did some kind of update but that information is not written back to the dbf files or dirty buffers user 2 trying to retrieve the information from table 2 in order to retrieve that information we must have server process must be able to find free buffers to keep it there before it can send it back to user 2 free buffers are required for new processes pinned buffers is a different type of buffers pinned buffers are the buffers that are in use in that time let's say for example db writer start writing the information from buffer cache to db files it's going to look for the dirty buffers 
and then going to flush. What about the pin buffers? While DB writer writing, these particular blocks are in use. At that point, server process is writing the information to those buffers. At the time, DB writer cannot touch those pinned buffers. So, pinned buffers means that are in use. So, dirty buffers modified in buffer cache in memory that are not yet written to DBA files, that is, to our storage. Free buffers, ready to use it. Pinned buffers, buffers that are in use by Oracle server process. Three different types of buffers in buffer cache. Well, when the DB writer is going to write? When the dirty buffers reach some threshold, they are building up, building up, building up. It's not really good idea to keep all these modified buffers in buffer cache because it is volatile. It's better to save it. It's time to flush all that information to data files. The second occasion, let's say for example, it's trying to pull thousands of rows as we just talked about it, we need to have adequate free buffers to pull this information from DBA files to buffer cache before it's sending to users. So, when a server process cannot find out required free buffers, at that time also it's going to write all the dirty buffers to DBA files so that those buffers can be utilized to pull all the required information into buffer cache for new process, that which it is looking for free buffers. When we are shutting out the database in a graceful way and consistent way, then all the information that is available in memory must be written back to the DBA files so that the information is going to be available when we bring up the database back. Any table space. Table space again is a logical aspect of the physicality of the DBA files. Anytime we change the status of a table space, at the time DB writer writes, all the buffers that which belongs to that particular table space will be written back to the DBA files. Like you are changing read write table space status to read only, or maybe you are changing to offline. So, whatever it is, and you are trying to back up a particular table space. During that period, we want to put the table spaces in a different mode called begin backup mode. At the time also, DB writer comes into the picture and it takes up all the buffers which belongs to that particular table space from buffer cache and then writes it back to DBA file to save it permanently. And during checkpoint, we will be talking about checkpoint. So, during whenever checkpoint occurs, it is going to call the DB writer. DB writer is going to write at the time including LRU and MRU. Both the type of buffers will be written back to DBA files. Now, let us look at the next important mandate background process which is a log writer. Very important one because as we talked about log writer is log files. As name says log writer, log writer is a background process which writes the information from redo log buffers to redo log files. Very simple to understand because it is named very appropriately. So, when log writer gets invoked, it goes and hits redo log buffers. Then what contains in redo log buffers? Redo log buffers are going to contain all the change records in the form of change vectors, all that information will be written back to the redo log files. Now, remember, we need to have minimum two redo log files. Now, we will see why we need two redo log files. It is very, very important to understand. Now, when log writer is writing to a particular redo log file, the status of the redo log file is current because currently it is in use. Now, log writer writes all the change vectors which are available in redo log buffers. While writing so, a redo log file which is a physical file can be filled up. While it is writing the status is current, 
वन स्टेप